Okay, I'm gonna make a video on uh, <clears throat> I just been coughing. It's not the corona, it's just got some kind of flu, it's going away. <coughs> okay, I'm gonna show you uh, how to put a distributor in. Again, I know most people know this, but I'm gonna show you some problems. I already did it. So here it is, you, you have an engine, like I did. It never had a distributor, you don't know the timing order. You don't know anything, <clears throat> but you got to figure it out. So that's, I'll show you that first. And also, <clears throat> yesterday, <coughs> I'll do a close up. I made a, uh, well, I didn't make it, a friend of mine, <clears throat> he's actually staying here for a while because he, in a trailer because he got in some trouble with this old lady, <clears throat> like we all do. <coughs> so let me zoom in on this. I was I was just talking to him about uh Hey, I need a starter brace. <coughs> so he goes, I'll make one. So here's the brace. He just took a piece of uh you'll see it in the video, but he he made it up, I'd say it took him half hour. <clears throat> then I was telling him, you know, we just talk, we, we think I like. He likes mechanical things, I like mechanical things. <clears throat> <coughs> so then I'm going to show you, I don't know if you can see this here. Probably not, I have to adjust the video again. <clears throat> Move the camera a little bit. This vacuum port here <clears throat> has, on this intake manifold, has different threads than the one on the 76. And I wanted to put this on the 76, so he just cut it, welded it, modified it, and now it bolts right in. <coughs> so that'll be on there. And then, lastly, which I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna go into detail on this. Pretty self-explanatory, but <clears throat> <coughs> here's a. Uh, I think this is a stock starter, and this has got a stock. I'm pretty sure this is a stock heat shield, which you don't, you can't get on any rebuilt starters. In fact, I don't even see these. On, I don't even see them on eBay. They might be on there once in a while. But you can make one, it bolts to the front here, and it bolts to that bolt on the starter there, so that's how it looks. So I'm just going to take it off, I'll just save the starter, I save all the old parts that are stock. I'll just sandblast it, paint it, put it on. Anyway, I'm going to turn this off. <coughs> And I'll talk about the distributor. You know, they're, they're the biggest problem with rebuilding an engine. I mean, not one of the biggest problems, but people didn't make mistakes. So I'm just going to go over it. <clears throat> I, I might mumble. I might make a few mistakes myself in words. So just, just listen closely. <clears throat> okay, so <clears throat> just to put a distributor in first, in my opinion, you need to know the rotation of the engine. You need to know which, which is what the spark plug holes. Or, you know, one what the firing order is, which one is which, and there and and where to stand. Do you stand in the front for the rotation, or do you stand in the back for the rotation? Because if you're here, it's clockwise. <clears throat> if you're standing back there, looking this way, which is the way they call these engines out. It's counterclockwise. <clears throat> so I looked all through my service manuals. <clears throat> I could not find anything that talked about the rotation of the engine. Again, we're assuming that you don't know anything about Pontiacs. 
and you didn't have a distributor and so on. This, for people that know, this won't mean anything. <clears throat> but first of all, so I got, I've been collecting books. So this is a, a Haynes book, and this just happens to have the rotation. <clears throat> and, the, and it calls out which cylinder is which. So the first time I looked at this, again, this is a Firebird Pontiac, so it shows a Chevy. It says Chevrolet built engines. I don't know if you can see this. <clears throat> so it's one, three, five, seven on this side, two, four, six, eight on that side, going that direction. But it shows the rotation. If you're standing again, they could, most most people. I think everybody. It's from if you're sitting in the driver's seat. That's the direction you're. you're they're talking. If they said the left side, that's sitting in the driver's seat. <clears throat> but on the Chevy engine, it spins clockwise, okay? Sitting in the driver's seat, it spins clockwise. That's the way they say it. And it also shows that little black dot. I don't know if you can see it. It shows that's the number one cylinder. It says that right here on, on the uh, distributor. But if you turn the page... <clears throat> It's the opposite. It's still one, three, five, seven, two, four, six, eight. But the rotation is the opposite for Oldsmobile and Pontiac V8s. So you get the opposite rotation. <coughs> also, they show the number one cylinder as being, uh, again, I don't know if you can see that, but they show it being up here. And again, I'm just going to show you versus the Chevy. Which they show it being down here. So anyway, I got that out of the side. <clears throat> but if you don't know any of that, and you're wondering what is the rotation of my engine, and you can't find it, you don't have it, but you live rural like me, I mean, the first thing is go to YouTube. But if you look at your timing, mark indicator on your engine most everybody has them it's going to say you know five degrees before top set dead center three degrees before top dead center and so on <clears throat> so so on mine it says again i'm standing on this side i'm standing looking this way right now but the timing mark is a, it says 24 before and then it goes zero just like i'm sitting so that's telling me, I mean, if you're looking at the harmonic balancer, when it spins, it's going counterclockwise. <clears throat> so that's, that's just a hint. But anyway, I, the best way is find out before you even start doing anything. And the other thing is, well, I mean, the next thing is take all your spark, spark plugs out. Because you don't want to fight compression. Put your finger over number one. Again, we know, well, now we know where number one is. <clears throat> and I couldn't do it by myself. Luckily, he came by. Because I can't turn it and put my finger over it. I tried putting paper towel to blow it out. That didn't work. It just blew through the paper towel. They also sell, you know, I've also seen a clever thing. You, you screw it in there and it's a whistle. So as it comes up, it'll start whistling. And when you... Hit the end of top dead center, the whistle will stop. That should theoretically be dead on top of the center. So anyway, you you got to be on top dead center. Then you look at your timing mark. It should be on, it, on the indicator. It say it should say zero top dead center. Now the reason I'm saying a lot of this is when I was a kid. My friend had a car, his dad had a car, and he said, if you can get this running, you can have it. <clears throat> and we looked at the timing mark, and it was on top of this center. And it was on the compression stroke, everything was right. But it wouldn't, it wouldn't start. So we took, it, we took the timing uh, cover off, and cut to the timing chain, and somebody had put the marks, they, they weren't lined up. In other words, there's a gear here, 
the marks should be lining up with each other. Well, it was off like that much. So even though the timing mark read right, it was wrong. <clears throat> so enough on that. So I'm going to pull the distributor out and I'm going to pretend like I don't know anything. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay, well, I, I said I was going to pull a distributor out, but just in case somebody doesn't know, know anything about distributors, that's a vacuum advance. This is where it plugs in on at least these HEI distributors. And the, the wiring is going to plug in here also from the car, the car wiring. And it says on top of your attack and battery, that's going to send a signal to the tachometer. And when it says battery, that basically means switch power. You got to, when you turn your key, it's going to send battery power. So the way you take these off, just push down. You see that? It releases. There's four of them. Okay, so uh, another thing I have to say is, again, looking in the manual, it doesn't say how this should sit in here. Should, it, should, it, should this be facing that way? Should it be facing this way? Should it be facing that way? Should it be facing that way? It doesn't, I could not find a picture anywhere, even online, because everybody's got their air cleaner on there and you can't see it. And, I don't, and it's not in the car. If it was, the wires would probably, probably be where they would go, and you'd know. But, and again, I want to say, you can put the distributor in any way you want. But the right way is the way they did it from the factory. So there's some clues here. <clears throat> On any car, there's going to be some clues. For instance, this vacuum advance... I can't have it over here. It'd be in the way of this this water jacket that's going to go to the heater core. It can't be way over there because it would hit the manifold. It wouldn't be there because of the firewalls here. So really, the only way this can really go is right there. Okay. So I'm going to take the distributor out and then I'm going to take the cap off and off. And because I don't. If I take it off, you'll see some clues that I don't want you to see. So we're just going to take it out. Take the cap off. I'm just going to set the cap aside. Oh, while I'm here. Again, when I was a kid, one time it was misfiring. And we couldn't figure out why. And we checked all the wires and everything was right. And I looked in the cap. And there's carbon trails. I don't know how they get in there. But there might be a carbon trail coming right out of the cap. You'll see it burn into the cap, kind of. And it was grounding to the outside of the uh, manifold. Or there might be a carbon trail that goes to the next plug. So if you ever have a weird problem, you can't figure it out on these old cars. Look for carbon trails. Make sure... That that's clean. Make sure these contacts in here are clean. Here's the uh, plug. Okay, so we, we said that. So I get a distributor and I'm just going to I'm just going to turn this. This, this this could show up in any angle. And when I turn that, you notice the gear turns. And by the way, there's, here's the electronic uh, ignition, uh, I don't know what we'd call it, part. There's no points in, these, in this gear. <clears throat> so let's just turn it some direction. And I'll try to put it in. I'm going to put the vacuum here, because that makes sense. Okay, it just happened to drop right in. But, I showed you on the manual, 
that it's supposed to be, this is supposed to be facing here in that book. I closed it. Again, Chevy is pointing that way. We're, we're on top of the center, I know that. We're on the compression stroke. But if somebody else is working on this car, they're going to assume that, that that's number one. We, we, you want number one over here. So how do we do that? So let's just see if I can turn it. I'll put it right there. It won't go in. It just won't go. I'll put it back here. It won't go. It's getting stuck. And you're thinking, what's wrong with my distributor? Why? What's wrong? Now, we already know that if I turn this to here, it'll probably drop in. Let's just try it again. You also notice that when it went in, it, it rotated counterclockwise. It didn't rotate clockwise. <clears throat> so the way to, there's two ways you can fix this. You could rotate the engine. You could have it. I mean, you know it's going to turn counterclockwise. Let's do that one more time. You know it's going to turn that way. So if you line it up here and you turn the engine, it's going to end up over here. <clears throat> so if you were to try to rotate the engine, put it in, eventually it would drop in because you would be lining the. Uh, the camshaft, the gear on the camshaft, which is right in here, you can see it. And then down inside, I don't know if I'm gonna show it, but if you look down in your distributor, you're gonna see a slot that you can put like a screwdriver in. That's the oil pump. This also drives the oil pump. The gear, the gear from the cam is driving the oil pump. So by the way, this is how you prime your engine. You get something in there and you spin this engine counterclockwise. And I've read, again, there's all kinds of different uh, information on this. How long, how fast. You're going to have to decide for yourself, but I'd say about 500 RPM. And really the best way is to take one of these valve covers off and see until the oil pumps up into the valve covers. Because right now there's no oil in this engine. And also if it's a new engine, you're going to want to put some break-in uh, oil, which is basically heavier oil, I think, or synthetics. In fact, some of the paperwork that came with the piston says put in break-in oil. So we talk about that. So now I'm going to show you how to get this thing in here. So I'm going to put my, I'm going to put the screwdriver in here. I'm going to turn that little, it turns really easy to watch. I can do it with two fingers. This is a trial and error thing. But again, I want it to end up, I want this rotor to end up pointing here. We know it's going to turn. It, I just happened to do it right. That's it. So that is number one. So now if I take the, uh, if I take the cap, I'll bring the cap over here. That is number one. Now watch when you, you know, you hear him talk about turning your distributor to time it, well, you can see, it'll turn all over the place. But right now, we're just going to start there. That is one. So there's a slot in here that matches this somewhere right here.
So as it turns out, again, we didn't know this, but as it turns out, it's pointing right here. That So that is number one. I mean, they could have put that notch way over here, and this would have been pointing that way. And same with dropping this, this distributor in. Well, I guess I already went over that. But anyway, so that is number one. So then you, you got to know the firing order. And in this case, double check everything. But in this case, it, it says right on here on the mouth, intake manifold. One eight four three six five seven two. One eight four three six five seven two. So one. Again, we're gonna go counterclockwise. One eight six five seven. I think I went off, but anyway, you get that here. One eight six five. I left out a number. One eight four three six. One eight four three six five seven two. One eight four three six five seven two. One eight four three six five seven two. I mean, I guess that's a no-brainer, but so. Again, I'm getting older, so I just marked it with, I just put tape on here and I marked just so I don't have to think about it when I hook up my wires. And I also marked the engine and the rotation of the distributor. I don't want to look it up again. I'm done with that. So that's it. And then you get your, uh, you get your hold down bolt. Again, there was, I found this in a box. So you put it on. Okay, I'm just gonna hand tight it because I don't have a wrench, but you notice it turns, that's no good. You need to get some torque on there, some. When you start up your engine, you don't want this thing rolling around. But you do want it tight enough where you can turn it. Because when, We'll talk about, when I start the car up, we'll get in depth further. And again, I'm taking my time, I'm working everything out. I'm not in any rush. I don't wanna, I don't wanna struggle to reach down if I can help it. Uh, I don't know if you can see this right here, but this oil pump might be in the way. I might take this off, I don't wanna break this. So uh, again, watch. Usually when you drop an engine in, you don't have the uh, alternator and all that on, but I don't I don't have the front end of my car is off, so it, it shouldn't it shouldn't matter. But this oil sending you unit I'm not exactly sure where it's gonna be, but it's gonna be right about here somewhere. I don't want to hit that accidentally. So, I, I, again, I always, for some reason, start going into other things. It's like I can't help it because they all tie together. So you're getting ready to put your engine in. In this case, I have my starter on, but these starters have shims because they want it to mesh with the... Uh, I think I talked about this in another video. So you're gonna bolt your torque converter on. And I think I discussed, there's two sides of this. I think I discussed that in another video. But why it's, before it gets in the engine, and I don't wanna shim, I don't wanna be under the car trying to shim this. So I'm gonna sh get this on here. I'll, I'll take it off the stand, get it hanging, bolt this on, and then I can get the right mesh. If I need shims, I'll be able to see the gears in the starter, see if they're meshing right.
The other thing, if I don't say it, I'll probably say it again later. This is the furthest away. Since one is over here, and that is one. Theoretically, that is going to be the longest spark plug wire, because you know how wires come in different sets. And this will be your next longest one, and so on, I mean, theoretically. So you, when you get your wires, again, you can do this in the engine, or you can do it right now. But I don't have all the standoffs that I'm going to, I haven't even figured that out. I'm going to do that later. I think that's it. So we talked about the... Uh, the uh, starter uh, brace in the back, which most cars, I think, when they, they take them off and they just throw them away, I, I think you can buy them for 20 bucks. Talked about this vacuum thing that we made. And I don't know that I'm even going to use this, these vacuum, but I, I think I'm going to put a vacuum cage in my car so I can plug into one of these ports. Gonna need vacuum to the distributor, but that, that's again, if you watch, I think I made a video on uh, manifold vacuum, you gotta go watch that. The difference between manifold vacuum, port vacuum, and, and venturi vacuum. <coughs> and this is gonna be running off of, again, port, just to say again, no, I didn't say it clear, port vacuum means it's not full. It, it, it means it changes. You, it's like a switch. You can change it when, as you open the throttle blades. Manifold vacuum is always what the engine is putting out. And Venturi vacuum is when you open it wide up, the air is sucking down. It goes through a Venturi, and it you get that vacuum can change too. So I think I covered all that. Anyway, this is really about the distributor. For anybody that's interested. Yeah, I just thought I'd show this. If, if anybody's looking for a heat shield for a for Firebird anyway, maybe it works on other cars. That's what it looks like. So all it is is this nut goes here like that. Just a little cheapo like a lock washer nut. And then on this side, this bolt actually goes all the way through, so I didn't have to take it off. I just wanted to clean the head. But you can see it it slips on, so you go put that on over here. And just slip that on. You can also bend it a little bit. It was it had been smashed, so I just kind of bent it. Get a little bit more air gap in between the solenoid. But I guess you could do that after it's bolted on. You could just stick a screwdriver in there and bolt and mess around with it. So yeah, I'm gonna use it. I'm just gonna clean up these parts. I'm just going to clean up this bolt too. Maybe I'll just switch bolts. I'm sure they're the same. If not, I'll just take the other one out. In fact, let me just check right now. Does fit on the starter.
So that'll work. I'll just put that brace right there. Again, I, was, I don't know if I said it before, but I think it's to protect these wires. I'm not sure. This, this wire's temporary. I don't know. Or I could just wash it. Oh, well, you know what works really good for cleaning this oil off? Besides that purple green stuff. This stuff works great. Hand cleaner. This is Joe. This guy can fix anything. He can do anything. So I'm going to show you what he's doing. You see that thing showing the piece? The vacuum fitting. So that vacuum fitting, I took off a 70, I took off the 76 manifold, but it won't screw onto the 72 manifold because those are, uh, what do you call it? NT, what, what kind of threads are those? MPT pipe thread. Which means NTP, he just told me because I didn't know. It means tapered threads. It's smaller here. So he's gonna, he just, he's making, he gonna, he's gonna make one. He's gonna cut, what are you gonna do? You're gonna cut that off? Cut the top off of that and put it on. So he took a bolt. Five eights. Like bolt I say, this guy can do anything. He goes, well, let me just do it. So he took a bolt. I had, he's going to, I don't know what he's gonna do. What are you gonna do, Joe? Cut the top off that one and a piece off the bolt that I drilled out and add a washer and the top of that and stick it all back together. You gonna weld it? Weld it or braze it. Weld it or braze it. I never braised in my life. Let's see. So what he how he did it as you see on the table there. He just kept uh Start with a small drill bit. Just step it up, up, up. He just kept stepping up to bigger sizes. Like I said, this guy can do anything. I'm serious. He builds CNC machines, lasers, fixes cars, boats, trucks. He's got a, uh, uh, what do you call it? License for driving big trucks? Oh, CDL. He's got a CDL. Then he asked me, do you have a drill press? And I got a drill press here that uh, <coughs> came with the shop. I've never used it. He goes, he goes I'll make it work. It says Cummings on it. Five-speed drill press, 120 volt. Just, I just need some kind of vice on here. I guess it works. So on this table, I got a grinder. I got, now I got a drill press and another bench grinder with a wire wheel. <laughs> and again, there was no truck with no truck chuck with that. And he goes, "Well, you got a drill." So we went and got the chuck off the drill. Finally got somebody that knows what they're doing. It's like a freaking miracle. So that's it for now. So I don't know if you can hear me. You cut the threads off that won't work on this manifold. He drilled a hole in the bolt. Now he's cut the bolt shorter. Smooth. 
No way, this guy can make anything. That's crazy. It's like a freaking metal scientist or something. No, he's rolling, he's rolling that piece together. Without glasses. I guess he closes, I guess he closes his eyes. Ah, me, I got a helmet. Anybody hasn't weld before? I need to get the button stuck on. Hey, you get the button stuck on. Yeah, the trigger stuck on the wires running out. Yeah, tell on me, why don't you? His, nose, his name is Joe Green Jeans. And I approve this message. So I think what he did is he welded the uh, a bolt that he cut off to a washer, I think. It's just going so fast. And he's going to bolt that fitting to it. It's sitting on the table. Yeah, that's the bolt he drilled out to a washer. Show him, Joe. Hmm? We're just bringing it over here for a second. Right about. I put the other piece on there. Homemade vacuum fitting. About 20 minutes so far. You want my helmet? Nope. I don't wear no stinking helmet. But anyway, I got my helmet on. If you get a, if you get into welding, and get an auto darkening helmet, like right now I can see him. Once it lights up, my lens will get dark. Let's see, I'll tell you when it gets dark. It's not getting dark from over here. But it's just dark enough. Again, the test is you close your eyes. You see a light in your eyes. Don't look anymore. Just keep your eyes closed for that light to go away. You only got one pair of eyes. I'm gonna walk over there. This is, I got enough lens from this far away. My eyes aren't gonna get burned.
is the welder I bought to do all the body work on my car because the welder that was left here was a piece of junk. When I did all the, if you go back to my early videos when I was doing the patch on the panels. I'm going to take it outside and cool it off. Then I'm going to sandblast it and uh, paint it. If you heat it up before you paint it, it'll dry instantly. So, here's the party made. Rubber washer, that was extra. It's all leftover parts. But now I just gotta paint it. I'll just heat it up, spray it black. Oh, one more thing. I was telling him that I, I was telling Joe that I need a place for the back of the starter. Put that on here and what we do So he's starting to make one. He's that kind of guy. He just makes it. Uh, old starter I got here. There's a heat shield on it. I'm gonna take this off of here. I think this is a factory. Uh, I'm talking to the camera. I think this is a factory starter, and this is a factory heat shield. So I'm definitely gonna use that. I get. I'm not sure why they put it there to protect the wires. Or just the starter or the solenoid. Anyway, it's a good find. I'll try to find one of those on eBay. It says Delco Reme USA 1998224 then 08102. Let's get double layer in here. To dissipate the heat, I guess. That's pretty cool. That's a cool find. <laughs> 